Hey everybody, this is Anna with Adventures with Anna and today I'm going to show you how to make my Tunisian in the round panhandle cover. Now this fits on my cast iron skillet handle. This is one of my smaller cast iron skillets. This is actually a little bit too big for this, but it works on my larger ones much better. As you can see, I mean it'll work on there, but it's, here's the end of my handle. But anyway, that's what we have. It's really great to grab on. If you would like to use cotton yarn, that is fine. I have used acrylic yarn on all of the ones that I have made. I have not had any problem with the acrylic yarn. Just do not let the panhandle be in the oven. If you put yours in the oven, do not put your cover in the oven and do not let it come in contact with any open flame. So anyway, in order to make this, you're going to need between a quarter or between an eighth and a quarter ounce of each two colors of yarn which I am using this variegated it is a red heart I can't remember the exact name for the color I believe it's candy stripe or candy it's candy something don't hold me to that I think that's what it is I no longer have the ball band for it as it is a scrap ball of yarn I'm also using this uh, red heart this is the parrot stripe this is a self striping yarn however I will probably only use the blue on this as I did in the example that I showed you. If I go into the purple, that's fine, but I really don't think I will. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a yarn needle. And you're also going to need a size H double-ended Tunisian crochet hook. So let's get started. Choose whichever color you would like to use for your uh, main stitch which would be your vertical bars here. The other color will be your return stitch. I'm going to use this for my main and this for my return, just like I did on this. You can also either chain two and do your single crochets in your first chain, or I like to do the magic circle, so that is how I am going to start my panhandle cover. He said we're going to five single crochet. There's one. Two. This is always the awkward part for me. I'm trying to hold on to everything. It's three. Oops, I split the yarn there. Four and five. So we got one, two, three, four, five. So let's pull this in. And I don't like to close mine up completely all the way until I have at least the first row done. Now we're going to pull up a loop in each loop on the single crochet. You've got your front loop, and your back loop. It does not matter whether you go front loop, back loop, or back loop, front loop. If you get them mixed up and switch it around halfway through, that's not gonna matter either. All that matters is that we have a total of, and hear me out and follow my directions. I know we only single crocheted five, but we're gonna have a total of 12 loops by the time we are done with our first row here. So. I'm going to go into the front because I can actually see that loop. If I pull up the back loop, my front loop will probably disappear. That's just the way it works for me usually. Alright, so pull up and we're not pulling through. Actually, yes we are. So pull through like that and you have your first loop that's in your front chain of your single crochet. And we're going to pull up a loop in the back chain stitch or whatever you call these things loops so now we have two single crochet or two loops pulled up in our first stitch continue on to your second stitch and do the same thing pull up a loop in the front and pull up a loop in the back move on to your next one pull up a loop in that front and then it's getting tricky here
pull up a loop in that back. Just like that. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're halfway there. Now I'm going to take my second color and you can need, and I'm going to make a slip, slip stitch, slip knot, whatever those are called. Turn your work and we're going to pull through that first loop. Just one. And then we're going to pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Now I personally like to leave two loops on my hook when I continue on. You may do it however you feel comfortable doing it. Flip your hook back around and we're going to pull up three more loops. We're going to pull up a loop in the front. And we're going to pull up a loop. I see I'm losing my stitches again. Maybe I'll go back in front. Here, let's switch it. I'll show you. Pull up a loop in the back, and I'm going to pull up a loop in the front. See, you really can't tell. It really doesn't matter. Pull up a loop in the back, and pull up a loop in the front. There's not a whole lot of difference. I mean, there is a little bit, but it's not that much to really notice. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do my return stitch so that I can show you my fancy finagling to get my 12 stitches out of my 10 single crochets. Okay, let's go back and count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How do I get those 12? Well, see this right here? This is that space that in regular crochet you usually ignore because that is the loop left from when I joined around. We're going to use that to make that our 12 loops that we need for making the panhandle cover. So once again, using that that you normally disregard in regular crochet, we're going to pull up a loop and then, all right, I'm going to go back and front. Sometimes it's easier for me to go front back. Sometimes it's easier to go back front. Like I said, it really does not matter. Most projects, you can't really even tell the difference. So since I used that loop, or chain, whatever you want to call it, that normally in regular crochet you completely ignore. We now have 12 vertical bars for our Tunisian panhandle cover. Let's count them again. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. See how simple that was? If you stuck with me, I appreciate it because it took me a little bit to actually grasp the concept of what I was wanting to do. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we need a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, roughly 17 rows total. So if you count this first row, that would be 17 rows. So a total of 17 rows, counting your first row of two loops on each chain. So just a simple, make sure you keep this tail in the back. And if you'd like, oh, well, first I guess we need to do this. We need to close up this hole. And then if you would like, go ahead and take this tail and this tail. Just tie them together. Because you know what? I'm not going to bother to try and sew this in. And it's not going to matter that you've got these long tails stuffed down inside your cover. So now we continue. This is where we left off. This is our first Tunisian vertical bar. We're just going to do one in each vertical bar all the way around. And it can get a little tricky. 
go so far and you can turn your hook and do your ret regular return stitch. Make sure you only pull through two each time, no more than two. And if you want to use a stitch marker so you know where you're at, that's fine as well. You don't have to. Let's go ahead and put one in just for the fun of it. I think it was right, right there. Yeah. So right here, I'll just grab a stitch marker and stick right there in that pink loop. Cause you can always follow that vertical bar all the way up. It's not necessary to move it or to use you know, a yarn of a contrasting color or anything, because you can just follow that vertical bar all the way up. Just keep doing as many as you feel comfortable pulling up loops with just simple Tunisian crochet around and around and around until you have however many rows you need for your panhandle or until about 17 rows which makes the perfect size for most cast iron handles on skillets. One thing you're going to want to make sure and do, I know it tends to curl like this with the right side in. You want to do your best to keep it out like this to keep the right side out. It might not allow you to do as many vertical bars as you would like, but it makes it a whole lot easier to crochet. All right, go ahead and continue on with your simple stitch Tunisian crochet in the round until you have 17 rows and I will catch back up with you when I'm almost there. All right, I am getting ready to start my last row. This will be row 17. Um, if you follow it, my stitch up, I already got my first stitch in my last row. So we will continue around and I will show you how I finish off my panhandle cover 
and then I will try it on my pan handle. See, follow my line up, my stitch marker. This right here is my first stitch, so that means I am ready to show you how I finish off the top of my panhandle cover. I'm going to use my blue as my top stitch. As you can see, I did that on this one. The blue that I used for my return stitch is also my finishing stitch on this panhandle cover. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull through just like that. Actually I'm going to chain one and pull through just like you would finish off I mean if that was a regular loop. And I'm not going to pull it super tight but I'm not going to you know leave it tall. I'm going to make it about the same height as the rest of my loops that I have of that color. Next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and do the regular finish like you would with Tunisian crochet, which is just pull a loop through and pull it through. Basically a slip stitch. And this finishes off the top of your Tunisian crochet panhandle cover. Don't want to do that. Don't want to split the yarn. As you can see, here is my last vertical bar that I did. I can still pull it, make it smaller, but I'm not going to do that. I wanted about the... Ah! I split that. You don't like to split thread. Splitting thread is not good. It's not thread, it's yarn. Splitting yarn is not good. There we go what happens when you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Okay, there, I did it again. Getting all excited because I'm about done. Alright, and then we're going to do it in that same, our last vertical bar that we made. Just like that. And like I said, we can pull a little bit tighter. And then what I'm going to do in my Next two chain stitches from where I did my finishing stitch, I'm just going to go through both loops and do a slip stitch and do it again. Both loops and do a slip stitch. And then I'm just going to finish it off like you would with regular crochet. Leave a little bit of a tail. Pull out my return stitch. Now I can pull this a little bit tighter now that it's done. Leave a little bit. And if you're like me, you do not like sewing in ends. So here's my trick. Since it's not really going to show, what I'm going to do is take, I'm going to roll the top down just a little bit so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take the blue and the gold, which this is my vertical bar, this is my return stitch. I'm going to tie those two together. Not super, super tight, but tight enough that it pulls it together. See how that looks? Just enough. I'm going to tie it one more time, so like about three times, and then I'm going to snip that yarn and be done with it. 
if you want to weave the ends in that's fine you can weave the ends in to make it look a little bit better but honestly you really can't tell so let's try it on the pan let's see what it looks on my cast iron skillet there's the handle slide it on looks awesome now if you'll notice this starts with a little bit darker and then goes to the darkest whereas this one is a little bit lighter I really like this I think I'm going to make some more until I run out of this yarn here and this will probably go on into the purple but I think that will look just as awesome as the blue so anyway there is how I make a Tunisian in the round panhandle cover if you would like access to this video all the time and also my written instructions which are just very basic uh, you're welcome to join my Tunisian crochet classroom which it is done with Google Classroom you must have a Gmail account in order to join that is not my rules that is because it is part of Google. I will put the information down in the description box below on how you may join that. On that page I have links to all my Tunisian crochet videos. Also I have started to put a few of my written patterns on there which my written patterns are nothing too amazing. They're very roughly written because I write them so that I understand how to do them but you're more than welcome to ask questions and whatnot. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for joining me in making a Tunisian in the round panhandle cover and I will see you in my next video.